Today I want to talk about taking the learning strategies that work and applying them directly to specific classes or working on different subjects in general in college. So if you haven't heard me talk about the learning scientists before, learningscientists.org is definitely one of my favorite places for learning about learning strategies. Let me show you. This is their website. They have six strategies that are really useful and important. I'm going to show you those in picture format, so mostly we can follow along with them. So these are the six strategies for effective learning. Retrieval, practice, space to practice, dual coding, interleaving, concrete examples, and elaboration. And I'm going to talk about them with some examples that you would use if you were for in an English class, a math class, and a science class. I lean a little heavily towards the math and science because that is my field, but I think you can apply these in lots of different ways. Some of them are very obvious. So I'm going to start with retrieval practice. Retrieval practice is the act of remembering something without seeing it first, and that's key in all of these things. So how would you practice retrieval practice in an English class? In English, you're not typically asked to remember too much detail, but it is useful to, for example, read a segment, look away, and try to think about what you read and remember it. That is a retrieval practice. If you're in an English class where you do need to keep track of certain things like parts of grammar, you could treat those like words you need to learn and know how to define them. So that's when we move into something like science. Retrieval practice is important for science because there are so many new terms you need to learn or processes you need to follow. For retrieval practice in those, I strongly recommend something like flashcards for all of your words. That way you look at the word and you have to come up with the definition. Or you can reverse them once in a while for practice, but the other way is harder. How would you use retrieval practice for math? For math, most of the time what you're attempting to do is follow the steps to solving a problem. To do that, retrieval practice might involve practicing solving the problem without looking at the steps. Try to find the next step. Then when you can't, you look back at the step, and then the next thing you go from the beginning, did you get those two steps in order? Then you can find the next step. Either way, you're looking at something, looking away in some manner and pulling that information out of your brain. It works for all of them. Space practice works pretty similarly in all types of classes because the idea is to put a little bit of time between what you're doing. College classes are great because most of the time they are spaced, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday. And then in between, you have a little bit of spare time. Or you can space by looking at something once per day and then not until the next day. So with English, you probably wanna do a little bit of reading every day, but not too much in a row. Don't read the entire book at once, read a little bit each day. With science, you definitely wanna look at something and then go back to it like two days later and try again, because you wanna let it actually get out of your brain and back in. With math, same thing. You don't wanna to have to do all the problems at once, do a few problems each day, that's space. Dual coding is where you put together different aspects of what we used to think of as learning styles, things like auditory, visual, read-write, all of that. Let me tell you, they work better together. So with every one of these, you want to dual code. In an English type class, you might want to dual code by reading aloud while you're looking at the words or by taking the words and turning it into some kind of image or mind map or connected diagram. In math, you might want to dual code, again, by speaking things aloud and also looking at them, by watching a video of what's happening, or by adding some kind of art to what you're doing, giving the numbers some kind of diagram associated with them, or using your hands. So this is where you can dual code with yet another sense by connecting the dots. Biology is super easy to dual code because you can 
hear things aloud. You can look at them on paper. You can draw diagrams of most of them. I recommend diagrams. You can map things. So again, you can make connections in different ways. Mind mapping is a great way to dual code. And speak it out loud while you do. People might think you're crazy, but if you learn it, does it matter? Interleaving means going back and forth between different things. In an English class, interleaving might mean putting your English with other stuff. If you're in a writing situation, what interleaving might be is read a little, write a little, read a little, write a little, instead of doing things in larger chunks, just to get your brain around it. In math, interleaving is the best one because what it means is do different types of problems. Don't do five addition problems, then five subtraction problems, then five multiplication problems. I know those are all too easy, but it's a great example. Do addition, then subtraction, then multiplication, so you're constantly swapping things. And it's gonna feel harder. Interleaving makes your brain work harder, and it doesn't like that, and it will make you feel like you don't know what you're doing and you keep forgetting. But I promise it works, and there's evidence for that. And in science, I would jump between different things. So interleaving would mean, especially if you're in the area where multiple chapters are coming together, which happens a lot in biology, to look at one type of thing for a little bit, then switch and look at another one. Mix up all your flashcards so that you have things on the nervous system and the things on the cardiovascular system and the things on the respiratory system together. That's a good way to interleave. Concrete examples is a way to relate something back to something you know and can see and can touch. Maybe not always, but close enough. In English, this is almost done for you since most English things are not as abstract. And you can say, oh, this character is just like when I felt this way, or I can relate to this situation in this book. But do it consciously. Take the moment to do that. In math, concrete examples typically means adding value to your numbers. What are you adding? What's the fraction? Where would you apply this to a real life type of situation? And I promise all math has real life types of situations, even if they're not taught directly in class. And you can find those in videos if you need to. I used to learn how different kinds of calculus curves related to landscapes. It might be one of my favorite things and I hate calculus. In biology, concrete examples, again, mostly easy because the things are real and you can back relate them to something. So if I'm talking about respiration, I actually want to talk about my process of using energy and breathing. Finally, elaboration, which is where you take something and you start small and you broaden it. In English, this might mean going beyond the page where you look at something and you think about, for example, if you're in a setting, what else might be in that setting? What other details would be involved in that? If you have a person, think about what they would be, what they might look like, what they might wear. In math, it can mean taking the extra steps to figure out how the numbers fit together. If you know how to follow a particular series, can you then understand abstractly how these pieces clip? Or can you at least try to branch it out and make it work? And in science, it almost always means going into just a little bit more generalized detail. Here's how the cells fit together. But if they're doing that, then how would they also need to stick? How would their membranes interact? What are these cells called? Can I add more to that? Sometimes doing that helps you get your brain fully around it. So those are examples of how to apply each of these directly to a class that you are working on. So I hope you give these a try with any of the classes that you're doing. And if you would like me to try to help you apply them to another class, drop me a line and let me know.